Welcome back, everybody, to the third portion in the series, The Seven Pillars of the Wisdom of God. Today, we are going to be looking at a quality that is very important for us to implement inside of our lives, and that is gentleness. As we have been reading before, we are establishing the basis of this series on a scripture verse found in James chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Where it says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, in the Greek, the word gentle is a Greek word, epikase, which means to not insist on our own way. And by, as a result, we obtain justice beyond ordinary justice. We find a very good example of what gentleness actually is in the book of Genesis and the story of Isaac when Isaac is contending for wells that he himself is digging. And in scripture, we find that he digs one well and the people of that land contend against him. And then he digs a second well and they contend against him once again. And then the third time, he finally is given a spacious place, as the Word of God says. And also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Esek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called this name Sitna. So he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called this name Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be faithful in the land. So we see in this narrative, Isaac is rightfully so supposed to be owner of these wells yet when people of the land come and contend with him this gentleness does not insisting on his own way arises in him and empowers him to move on to the next place and then to the next place and finally we see justice beyond ordinary justice it's it it is seemingly an, a very unfair situation because isaac had worked diligently for this well but yet God blessed them when he didn't insist on his own way. And this is the way of gentleness, the way of not forcing a situation that simply isn't working out. It is similar to the idea of not trying to fit a square cube into a circle shaped whole. Isaac understood if I abnegate my rights, God will be the one who will give me justice and this justice in this situation didn't look like punishing the people who took away the well but rather when it was finally in god's timing to give him a spaciousness and we actually read later in the context of this narrative that isaac was blessed above the people of the land in a time of famine so even though they came and took away what was rightfully his when god finally gave him spaciousness there wasn't enough room to contain what God was blessing him with. He was blessed in a very unprecedented circumstance in the midst of a famine. And so we can find in the example of Isaac that true definition of what it means to walk in gentleness. But as we continue on during this teaching, I want us to look at two more characters. One of them particularly is King David. See, a lot of us, we know King David as somebody who was a warrior, a man of great strength and great vigor, a man who defeated Goliath and was one of the most notable kings in the time of Israel. However, very few understand that King David didn't attribute his greatness to his military prowess, but rather scripture actually says that David understood that his greatness actually came from his gentleness. As it says in the word of God, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to understand that being a warrior for God doesn't mean we have to be contentious. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And it is in humility and it is in gentleness that god actually exalts 
us. We see another example of this in David's life when David is fleeing from King Saul and King Saul is pursuing hotly after David out of jealousy and out of envy, pursuing to kill the man that God has anointed. And King David, though he is rightfully anointed to be a king this whole time, still pursues God's way of doing justice in gentleness. We find this in scripture. Where it says, now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord the King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. There's many important things that we can actually learn from this scripture. Number one, King David understood God's order of doing things. Although King David was already anointed as king, he was willing to wait for the right time for his time of exaltation. And we also see that King David, though he could have killed King Saul then and there and possibly um, come to the rulership much faster, preferred the way of gentleness, understanding that it wasn't about insisting on his own way and more importantly, not even listening to how other people thought he should get to the kingship, which is an important factor that we see in this story in King David's life. King David was a man of God who feared the Lord. And because he feared the Lord, he understood that his battle wasn't against flesh and blood. It wasn't against this man that was pursuing after his life, but instead he understood it from a spiritual perspective and understood that his time would come when God's divine appointment would arrive. And again, David was no novice to being a man of war. He says, you teach my hands to do battle, my fingers to do war. This is the man that God used to slay a giant. This is a man that God used to slay hundreds of Philistines. So this was a man that was very much capable to be able to force a situation if he wanted to. But yet we see that scripture is teaching us that wisdom that comes from above, that through gentleness, David was placed into the right place the right way. Now, the third person that we find in scripture who is another example of gentleness is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Scripture says about him, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. The Lord Jesus Christ throughout his life was a man who was reviled, who was who was mocked, who was scoffed at, and who was maltreated by his listeners and even by his own family members at one point. However, we see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ the wisdom in being meek. He says, Come unto me, all you are heavy burdened and laden, and take my yoke upon yourself, for it is easy and light, for I am lowly and meek at heart. When God decided to exalt his son, he did it through the meekness of his actions. We even see this at the baptism that he received when the Holy Spirit didn't arrive as a rushing wind, they didn't arrive as an earthquake, but rather as a meek and gentle dove. It's this quality that God is looking for inside of our hearts. As we have been talking, the seven pillars of wisdom are seven character qualities that we need to have inside ourselves so that the wisdom of God can come unadulterated to us and flow through us. Because when we apply these seven qualities, we become pure vessels that God can that can receive that wisdom that comes from above. The antithesis of actually being gentle is pride scripture says by pride comes nothing but strife but with the well advised wisdom a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes he that passes by and meddleth with strife not belonging to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears so the antithesis of pride and seeking after strife is something that even james says but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Knowing this, the apostle is saying, if you have bitterness and strife inside of your hearts, don't fool yourself. 
You're not walking in wisdom that is coming from above. The Apostle Paul even says that if we walk in contention and strife, we are still walking as the immature. Those of us who desire to mature in Christ need to learn that it is through the gentleness of Christ that we will gain the knowledge of God. See, the wisdom of God is so multifaceted. It is so expanse. Romans even says it is unsearchable that in order for us to actually be able to be recipients of it, we need to die to ourselves. We need to carry that cross and say, I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to strive like Isaac didn't strive. I'm not going to be filled with pride, you know, like David knew, which is why he, even though he was already appointed and anointed as king, he didn't say, how dare Saul come in to find me, the true king of Israel. He humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, they were both exalted. We even see that in the Messiah's life. The greatest example that we could possibly follow after, the author and the finisher of our faith, who despised the shame of the cross, looking forward towards the glory that came after. And I think this is possibly why, as Christians, we struggle with it a lot, because we are very short-sighted when it comes to the time of exaltation, or when it comes to the time of God manifesting His hand and, and honoring us before other people. And we need to remember that as long as we are doing things God's way, God will exalt us in due time. It is the gentleness of God that will make us great. Now, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, I hope that you enjoyed this portion of the seven pillars of the wisdom of God. Remember, we are going to finish this until we get through each pillar. And by God's grace, this is what we will do. And if you haven't watched the other videos, I recommend that you go into the playlist section and watch the other ones so that you can learn how to be equipped and develop these character qualities that God is seeking for in his sons and daughters so that we might mature in Christ and position ourselves to receive the unadulterated wisdom that comes from above. I pray that you are all blessed in Jesus name. Thank you for watching.